Hello everybody, this is Meister Keen, and today I have notes. <laughs> you guys you guys finally did it. You gave me enough to talk about that I actually have to keep notes on what the hell I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to start with just a little bit of news. First off, we've done some work on the Space Engineer server. It's doing a bit better. Still a couple of small problems to iron out. Um, and I'm going to be making a post about that soon. Uh, there are a couple things to talk about about the Space Engineer server. I'll do that in another, another video. But please, I would encourage you, if you were having performance issues with it before, I think we've got those mostly ironed out. Give it a shot. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is the fact that uh, I've actually gotten enough pledges on my Subscribestar now that uh, server hosting costs are covered. We're good for this month. Uh, if you want to throw a few more dollars into the hat just to support me, support the videos, you can you could do that. But if you just want to support the servers, don't bother. You know, wait till next month. All right. So that's where that's at. Uh, that's good news, though. It means that people are willing to donate, and that's awfully nice. Thank you, thank you very much to those who did donate. Okay. Um, next order of business. Uh, oh, it has been mentioned that uh, people would like to see more uh, debate, more voices than just my own on this channel. That might be a good idea, uh, and I've already promised uh, Omnicide that uh, I or maybe uh, maybe one of my allies would debate him, and I would put that debate up on this channel. Uh, one thing I would caution against. Omni said he wanted to debate me and Drunk Russian Bear, and I would say it's probably a bad idea. I think if both of us were to kind of gang up on Omni, uh, it would not go so well for him. I think it would be a little bit uh, a bit nasty for him. So I think it should be either me or Drunk Russian Bear, or maybe one of the other people who is sort of in my camp that should debate him, and then that audio should go up on the on the channel. Uh, cause I would rather he get more of an even platform for him to express his ideas. I think that that would be better. So, uh, mention in the comments how you would prefer that to go. Uh, okay. We're two and a half minutes in. I haven't even gotten into the subject of the freaking video yet. Uh, oh, uh, one more item, one more item, channel analytics have pretty well proven that my longer videos do better. When I get longer and rantier and angrier and what have you, apparently those videos do better. So I know that many of you prefer small, shorter videos, you know, five to ten minute. But I, I, I don't do those. I, I break a lot of rules. I... This is, uh, essentially it's a, it's, 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 I'm doing this live in one take. It's not live, but it's one take, right? I don't, uh, I don't edit anything. Nothing is edited in my videos. I'm a terrible editor. I mean, I can edit, I can edit video. I just hate doing it. And if I record something and then tell myself I'm going to edit it, I don't do it. So my solution to this is just to record in one take, take, and then just immediately upload it to YouTube doesn't matter how many times I go, um, or how many times I give a William Shatner pause or any of that. I just upload it. Sorry. If you don't like the sound of my voice, you're not going to like this channel. Um, you know, there is an, uh, there is an unsubscribe button. I would invite anyone to use it. <clears throat> All right. So there's that. Good. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because I was asked to do a video. Uh, I am part of a small gamer community called LPG. Literally pro gamers. That's what all these guys are. And uh, it's led by this guy named Saramore. Saramore is a, he's another big personality. He's kind of like me. He's a big bombastic personality. He does, uh, he does Twitch. I think he might do a little bit of YouTube. Uh, he's got buddies that also do Twitch and YouTube. Uh, he's got half blood. If any of you are from the Worlds Adrift community, you probably know who these people are. In fact, there was a beautiful video that was done as a send-off to Worlds Adrift. Worlds Adrift was a sandbox game. It was an airship-building kind of sandbox game. You built these custom ships, and you 
you know, mind materials and things like that. It was a survival sandbox game, and these airships were how you got around, and uh, you had battles in them, you know, you had cannons and things like that, you could shoot each other. Half-Blood was a fairly talented PvPer in Worlds Adrift. He loved the game, and he would make a lot of videos. He made some inspiring videos, um, and one of them was a send-off to Worlds Adrift. So, uh, I would say uh, cheers to him, and if he gets into Starbase, you, ex you can expect more content of that type from him which actually is exciting. Uh, I would really like to see him do some work like that. And of course, Saramore is, um, what is he? I, I would call him a semi-professional shit -stir. Uh He's really good at it. He's better at it than I am, I would say, in terms of just pure on shit stirring. In fact, join, <laughs> full disclosure, you should know this. I hang out with these people. I talk to them. And Saramore is actually the guy who came up with Join or Die. Saramore and Half-Blood are the guys that actually came up with it. I did say that, that Join or Die is a piece of mimetic genius, and I mean it for all the reasons I said it. As much as I hate Join or Die, you have to admit that. And it's good to know who it is behind it and uh, to understand their character. These aren't evil people. Um, you know, are they assholes? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. But they're not terrible people. But uh, these guys asked me to weigh in on the subject of voice over IP in Starbase. Uh, mainly because they wanted to shout down uh, somebody named Vexus, who's another guy from the World of Drift community. Whatever. I'm going to briefly touch on it, but the subject of this video is going to wind up being a lot deeper than that. Because there's a lot of history to us, to this to this group of people, and me, and so forth. And uh, it goes back into World's Drift and some events that happened at World's Drift. And it also has to do with the roots of why I make these videos. So I'm going to dive into that. And uh, I'm going to start by bringing on our first guest in this YouTube channel. And his name is Sailor Jerry. A little bit of ASMR for you guys. There we go. Oh, that sucks. That's the last of my rum. All right. Okay, let's do this. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so, voice over IP. VoIP. Do we need it? Here we have... This is nice, by the way. The Starbase forums have launched, and we have forums now. That's awfully nice. So, um, the debate is whether or not voice over IP should exist. I weighed in on this. This is basically my opinion. I figure there's lots of reasons to include VoIP. There's more engaging multiplayer, more interesting PvP, more opportunities for player interactions. A game like this probably should, be, should default to including VoIP. Discord is no replacement. Uh, there's a lot of spontaneous player interaction that is made possible by VoIP. Should Starbase have VoIP? Of course it should have VoIP. This is not... I don't think this is much of a debate. If it's an option, it should be an option. However, it should be implemented in such a way that it's not completely obnoxious. All I'm asking is, I don't want my ears to be raped. There are some really nasty things that you can do to my ears, and I would rather to be able to opt out of those things. There's a couple different solutions you could have. It could be kind of a radio system. You could have ships that hail each other, so you could accept a hail or not. Um, you know, you could have a frequency system, so there could be a call frequency, and then you could have chat, other chat frequencies. Um, there's a list of things that you could do. It could be directional. You could have, like, an antenna that's directional. Uh, the VoIP could be directional from player to player in player spaces. I, I don't know exactly how the devs should do it, but there should be a VoIP system. It should just be a little more optional and a little less chaotic than, let's say, Rust, for example. I'd say voice in Rust is very appropriate for Rust, but I don't think it would be appropriate in that way for Starbase. That being said, spontaneous voice, absolutely, yes, implement it somehow. This isn't a debate, just do it. There's enough people here for whom this is an important uh, gameplay element. 
that I would say there's no real strong argument against it. You know, VoIP can certainly be immersion breaking, but I just handle it. I, I think there are definitely design solutions, right? That's totally up to the devs to come up with a design solution um, that handles it so the VoIP isn't completely obnoxious, but it's up to them. All right, so now there's something else. Um, before I get into the rest of the video, there's some background. I talked about World's Drift. World's Drift died. That game ended. And a lot of the players from World's Drift have come over to the Starbase community. Me and my group are part of that migration. Uh, if you noticed, there's a group called Driss, D-R-I-S-S. Um, Driss are, all of those guys are World's Drift guys. The word Driss comes from World's Drift. Driss was the name of the PvP server for World's Drift. It had a PvE, like a non-combat server, and a combat server. Combat server is Drifts, Driss. That means that these Driss people are basically their PvP people. A um, bunch of them went over to another game called Last Oasis. They are playing the beta for Last Oasis. A bunch of others have gone to Starbase. So these are people who... Uh, so the, the sandbox gaming world has been pretty heavily affected by Worlds Adrift and by the fact that Worlds Adrift has died. Now these gamers are looking for a, a, new, a new place to settle down. Starbase looks like it's going to be it. So a lot of the culture and a lot of history and a lot of old beef from Worlds Drift has migrated over here, and I'm going to explain some of that history to you so you understand where I'm coming from and you understand where they're coming, coming from. We'll go through this. We'll go through this list. Here, actually, we'll do this. We'll do this. Most likes. Here, let's refresh this. We're getting most. Bloody Amy Flint, Atreides, Vexus, Biglet, Gypsy Danger. All of these people are from the LPG server. They're all in here, right? Bunch of these guys are joiners and join or die, right? This is the same community. Uh, let's see. Strite, old buddy from, from World's Drift. Good guy, by the way. Um, God, who else is there? Uh... I think that's it on this list. But that's these are the top liked members. <laughs> I don't know how they did this. They probably did it with a bunch of clone accounts, but right? So already you can see that there are uh there are an awful lot of people. Oh look, it's awful citizen. That's a goon, by the way. That's uh, somebody from the something awful forum. Awful lot of people from Worlds Adrift. Awful lot of people from Worlds Adrift. You're also going to see a lot of people from EVE Online, uh, such as, for example, the goons. You're probably going to see a small contingent of goons come over to Starbase. So uh, these communities are interconnected. The sandbox gaming world is a relatively small world. And these people are interconnected. And I personally have got some history with these guys. So the discussion about VoIP over in the LPG server got pretty heated, and it got over into the subject of exploits and cheating. World Drift was not a terribly well-designed game. It had issues with exploits. One of the major issues that it had was duping. It's a sandbox game, which means it's a, it's a resource-gathering and building game. Uh, and it had major issues with duping. Duplicating materials. You could you had in inventory dupes. The uh, the inventory system between client and server was very very well badly designed. It had many many issues with duping. You could actually on a bad day you could accidentally dupe your entire inventory, <laughs> which I actually actually did accidentally a couple times. Um. So, but uh, this was considered cheating if you did it. And it was considered cheating because it just made it so completely easy. If you were intentionally duping, you were making it so completely easy, easy to recreate a ship if you lost it. The way Worlds Drift worked is that everything was on your ship. You didn't have a base anywhere. So if your, if your ship was sunk, you were set to, you, you, were, you were at square one. You had nothing else going for you. You had to build another ship, and that meant gathering resources. 
So there was a lot of startup time after you lost a ship. But if you were duping, you didn't have that startup time. You had none of that startup time. You know, half an hour, you had another ship in the air and you were all good. Whereas it would take several hours sometimes for somebody else. So duping was considered cheating. And um, these LPG guys, the joiners and so forth, they were, are heavily, heavily against cheating. They hate any form of exploits and cheating. Um, so I've got a bit of a confession for them. The, uh, here, if you look at the Harbor Men, I'm going to bring over my Discord here. Uh, the code of the Harbor Men. One of the, one of the points of the code is that in any fight with a truly evil enemy, I shall use my most brutal and effective tactics. I know that the cruel, the criminal, and the cheat deserve no better than to be unfairly and completely defeated. <laughs> That's one of the points of the code. Uh, I wrote this years ago, and it's a little bit flowery, but it, it still stands today. Um, early on in the history of World's Drift, we were being invaded by a bunch of goons. The Something Awful Goons. Same goon swarm guys as from Eve. They had four or five different little groups in in uh, in Worlds Adrift. They weren't, like, unified or anything like that, but there's a bunch of them, and they were all from, from the same forum. Um, one of those groups was kind of legit. They were doing some interesting roleplay things, but another one of those groups were using... We're heavily, heavily using exploits in Worlds of Drift to get an, up, get an upper hand. Another point about Worlds of Drift gameplay was that you had a weight limit. Uh, with all the upgrades, your ship could be about six tons. And that was it. That was all the weight that you had to deal with. So that meant you could not only have so many cannons. If you had too many cannons, the ship got heavy and it got slower as it got, as it got heavier. The physics simulation was very real. But early on, um, I think before early access release. It was back in the days of Alpha. Um, there was an exploit where you could get two uh, lifters, two lifter cores attached to the same ship, which was not supposed to be allowed, which doubled your weight limit. So if you fully upgraded both of those cores, your ship could be 12 tons instead of 6 tons. So we had these massive ships running around with tons and tons of cannons and tons and tons of engines. And they were just slaughtering everybody. You couldn't you couldn't deal with a ship that massive, and you couldn't deal with that many cannons going off all at once. So my crew, the Harbormen, we decided that what we were going to do about it was we were going to build our own cheat ship. And we gathered up a bunch of really high-quality materials, um... I forget whether we actually duped the materials. I don't think we did. Uh, but we did the double core trick, and we got a massive, massive ship going. It was very well designed. Uh, we kind of prided ourselves on doing a better job of cheating than the cheaters. We called the ship Oppenheimer. And then we went out, and we hunted down one of these goon behemoths. And sure enough, we proved their betters. We sunk them. We sunk them pretty easily. Didn't even take much damage out of it. Um, so we kind of proved to ourselves, yeah, we can win a fight. In fact, we, we had a few fights with goons. I've got a pretty good record of sinking goons. It's one of the reasons why I wasn't part of the goon panic a few weeks ago. <laughs> I was telling people to relax, you know. Oh, the goons are coming. Lots of people were really nervous about the goons in, Star in the Starbase community. Don't be that nervous about the goons. They're... Some of them are amazing players, but for the most part, goons are just, they're just ordinary guys, and they're only organized when they've got a strong personality among them to organize them. You know, you know, Mittens, Mitani, is really damn good, and that's why, uh, that's why the goons are such a force in EVE Online. It's because they've got Mittens. Mittens isn't going to come over into Starbase and stomp us all in Starbase. The goons are not going to be that much of a threat in Starbase. They might be a pest. And they might be interesting. There might be some interesting role play. My suggestion is just play the game. Just play the game with them. They'll be there. You know, chat with them. If they if they talk shit, talk shit back. 
That's all it takes. That's all it is. But anyway, I say this having some experience fighting goons in another game. All right? So believe me on this. I've got a good record fighting goons. But anyway, so we took we took our massive cheater ship and we went and we sunk the cheaters. Big victory. It felt really good. It felt really, really good to take them out. We had cheated to do it, but we did. We, we took out the cheaters, and that was all we wanted to do. But within about 10 hours, there were three more cheat ships. Three more 12-ton massive behemoths running around, sinking all the newbies. So the goons, in response to us cheating to take out their cheat ship, made like two or three more of these cheat ships. It might not have all been goons, but it didn't take them long to get another one of these big, expensive, complex ships up in the air. And uh, for them to have, I guess, other buddies or copycats or whatever. So we had to swallow a very, very bitter pill. And that's the title of this video. Swallowing Bitter Pills. We had to deal with the fact that by cheating we had just increased the amount of cheaters in the game. We had added to the amount of cheating. This was not helpful or useful to anybody. Um, as much as it felt good to take out that big enemy ship, we had done no good for anybody. So that's the goon lesson. If you cheat to counter cheaters... You're just adding to the cheating. Let's talk about this philosophically. Let's talk about this philosophically. What, what is a game? What is a game? A, a, a game is a set of... Uh, well, okay, first you've got an objective. You've got some something you're trying to accomplish, Right? Or at least there's the possibility of some objectives, something you're trying to accomplish. In a sandbox game, you kind of tend to provide your own objectives. But there's something to drive you, something to drive you forward. And then there are obstructions. There are people in the way, or there are rules in the way, or something, right? There's something that makes that objective difficult, right? So there's the objective, there's something that stops you from getting to the objective, and then, of course, there are the abilities and... Uh, there, there are, it's sort of like, it's like a maze, right? What's the goal? The goal is to get from the start of the maze to the end of the maze. You could come up with reasons why, you know, to beat the challenge or whatever else, to, you know, feel good about yourself about beating the challenge. Good, great. Those are all good reasons, but, um, uh, but the objective is get to the end of the maze, right? What are the barriers? The barriers are the walls of the maze, Right? But there is freedom among the barriers. You can, you, you've got space to move. If the maze were just one single big block of wall, it wouldn't be a maze. If, if it were a box with a couple of open ends, it wouldn't be a maze. It would be too easy to go through it. You have to have a balance of the, the barriers, the obstructions and rules, the things that are going to stop you, and the things that you can do to defeat the barriers. You have to have freedom among the barriers. And you have to have a purpose. You have to have something you're driving toward. If you break down the walls of the maze, you're cheating, right? You are breaking down, you're actually degrading the game itself. The most essential elements of the game. Cheating, the definition of cheating is breaking down the barriers in opposition so that the game is fundamentally altered so that it is a different game. It's not a game anymore. You know, a gamer is kind of a noble animal. A gamer is a person, a being, who wants to test himself against the barriers in opposition that are presented to him. He wants to test himself against what may come. I like gamers. I am a gamer. Everything I do is about helping gamers to be better gamers. That is who I am. What I don't like are cheaters, because in my view, cheaters aren't gamers. If you're a cheater, 
you're not welcome to the club. All right? So, there's a definition of gamers. There's a definition of games for you. And there's a definition of cheaters. If you're cheating, you're not gaming anymore. You're not a gamer. You aren't that noble beast who wishes to test himself against the challenges. You are somebody who is breaking down, dishonoring, disrespecting the game itself. Incidentally, this is one of the problems that World's Drift had. If World's Drift had a single problem, it didn't. It had many problems, but I think that possibly its worst problem was the fact that the developers of the game were... Uh, the developers of the game were willing to put up with cheating. They were willing to let cheaters cheat. They saw it as the game was an early access, right? It was play testing, right? So if, if it was a bug that was in the game that was allowing people to cheat, then it was really their responsibility. It was not something that the developers felt was a violation, right? So they were willing to put up with cheaters who were rampantly cheating, rampantly, tons of cheating. They were willing to put up with these people and let them just go ahead and get away with it. And I think that killed the game. Because when you're going up against cheaters, uh, it's just, you know, what do you do? You cheat? You cheat to counter it? Like I said, that doesn't work. You know, I have personal experience to tell you it doesn't work to cheat against cheaters. So what do you do? It's up to the devs to handle it. All right, I got another story for you. And this one's a little more... I guess a little more pertinent to the uh, to the culture of World's Drift that's being carried over into Starbase. Okay, more rum. Ah. Okay, so back in early uh, early access, back in August of twenty seventeen, I think it was. Yeah, it was two years ago. Um, I had this bright idea that we were going to form up a uh, a sort of a uh, a neutral space for everybody to enjoy inside Worlds Drift. Worlds Drift was free and open PvP. You could PvP with anybody at any time, anywhere. Um, there didn't even used to be the the PVE and PvP servers. It was all one server. So if you were online at all, anywhere, at any time, you could be attacked by anybody who was in the same space. All just one server, man. So um, what I decided to do, I thought it would be a great idea. We'd form up a big neutral space where people could come and trade and play and, and have fun. Um, and... Uh, well, I called it, I called it a free port. Uh, and it was inside of a of an area of the game that was called Osiris. It was Freeport Osiris, and Freeport Osiris had one rule, one one big law: no hostile activity inside Freeport space. Right? If you're non-hostile, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you're about, just don't do any hostile shit inside the Freeport. That's it. That was the only rule, and that was that was all there was to it. Uh, now you notice I've made a lot of videos criticizing people for trying to make game governments. The free port was kind of a game government. It was a free, open, neutral space that anybody could come into. So, and it was protected. We had security groups and and things like that. Um, well, the free port pretty much immediately ran into problems. It had immediately ran into problems. The first problem it ran to, into was just random assholes. Any old random asshole sees something like a free port, and what they really are seeing is they're seeing something that they can attack. You remember in a previous video when I said that the best possible way to invite endless war is to declare peace? That's what I did in Freeport Osiris. That's how I know it doesn't work. Because we were pretty much at war right from the hop, right off the hop, right off the beginning. 
And remember this guy, Saramore. Saramore was a big part of that. Saramore's a Twitch streamer, and he had a little bit of a beef with another Twitch streamer uh, who I will call Gasoline. Uh, Gasoline came wandering into the Freeport and started talking to people in the Freeport, realized what the Freeport was, and he said, ooh, this is a way for me to protect myself. Because Gasoline and Saramore were supposed to be fighting each other, and uh, Gasoline didn't really have the PvP chops for it. So he decided that what he was going to do was he was going to hide out in the Freeport, and he joined the security forces of the Freeport. And he, and uh, also I had a f couple of my own buddies, uh, some harbor men who were part of the security forces. Uh, one of them I will name Clay. So Clay and Gasoline got to working together as part of the security team. They were actually one of my most effective security teams. And uh, they ran around in the Freeport, uh, you know, stopping guys from coming in. But of course, Saramore didn't like the fact that the Freeport was harboring this guy, Gasoline. So Saramore messaged me and told me all about how he was going to burn down the Freeport if I didn't, if I didn't kick out Gasoline. He, he was, it was a major, big old threat, and of course, I, I, uh, I, I hated that. I had pretty thin skin back then, and I, I didn't deal with it very well. And so I, I shot some threats back at Saramore, told him I didn't like him, and uh, uh, that was all very, very dramatic and such. And uh, and and told him, yeah, no, fuck off. Gasoline's one of ours, and uh, and I'm keeping him. So if you're gonna if you're gonna start shit, go ahead and start shit. We'll just shoot you down. So Sarah Moore did, and he brought a bunch of his buddies, and uh, we we had a war between. Uh, they actually formed a group. They called it Libertalia. Libertalia. You can still find Libertalia propaganda videos by Half Blood on YouTube. Check them out; they're actually pretty good. Uh, anyway, um, so Libertalia versus Freeport became a war, full on war. There were battles every day, uh, and it got really, really bloody. Uh, it got to the point where after a couple of weeks, for that first couple of weeks, the Freeport was pretty great. You could fly around in the Freeport. And you just find, you find people, you chat with them. It was a very relaxed space. It was awesome. But during the, the, uh, the Freeport Libertalia war, um, it got to be actually the most dangerous space in the entire game. This was the heyday of Worlds Adrift. It was just about two years ago today. Just about. And this was the high tide of Worlds Adrift. Uh, I don't think there was any more interesting or more dramatic time. I don't think there was any time when we had more players online in Worlds Adrift than at that time. This was the good time. But anyway, uh, Saramore began... And some of his crew began accusing Freeport security personnel of duping and cheating, which I took very personally because I had a rule about cheating. You don't cheat. I, I didn't actually write a rule about it until uh, until a couple of weeks in after some of those some of those, some of those accusations came around. I thought it was kind of obvious. I thought it was really obvious. I talked it over, you know, with some of the Freeport people and said, hey, guys, you know, we got to really make sure that none of our people are cheating. You know, watch out for it. I finally published a big official rule. Remember, the, the, the Freeport had only one law, no hostile action in Freeport space. I had to write another law. I didn't like it. I thought, I, I thought one law would do it, but I had to write a second one, which kind of pissed me off. And the second law was no cheating. <laughs> Damn it. I, I, I didn't think. I, I thought that none of my security people had it in them to do any sort of cheating. Yeah, I really thought that. Anyway, so, so weeks of war go by. Um, and during much of this time, I was unfortunately not really able to directly run the Freeport. Uh, the Freeport had gone over into the hands of of another guy. Uh, we're we'll we'll call him. Uh, <laughs> we'll ah uh, oh, God, we didn't name for him. We didn't name for this guy. We'll call him Otter. Uh, so we had this guy Otter, who was the actual administrator of the Freeport. 
I had given it over to him to actually run the Freeport. He'd made a big Discord server. There were lots of people in the Discord. It was very active. There was lots of drama in there, which was fun. But but Otter was the guy who was actually running it because I was working like 70, 80 hours a week. I had two jobs at the time, and I just was not able to put the time into Worlds Adrift, which sucked. If I'd personally been running things, maybe I would have been able to spot what was going on and handle it. But it got down to about the end of of August 2017, and Otter had finally had it. So many threats of uh, so many threats, so many accusations of cheating, and all this other stuff. And finally, it came out that gasoline and clay. That Twitch streamer and one of my harbor men, guy from my group, and a few of their other hangers on, it finally came out that they had been cheating all along. All along. All along they had been duping massive amounts of materials. All along they'd been building these ships and they'd been they'd they'd been they'd been fighting this war dirty. And Saramor and his crew had been fighting it clean. They weren't cheating. More rum. Oh, I really wish I had more rum. That's the last of it. <sighs> All right. So, um, so, that was the Freeport. So, uh, so Otter finally just nuked the uh the freeport server he had ownership of it and he just he just nuked the freeport discord the whole thing fell apart and uh that was the end of the freeport libertalia won the freeport war and he didn't they didn't win it because they were better fighters well maybe because they were better fighters maybe they were the better fighters but they won it because the good guys cheated you know, if you're a bad guy, if you're just an asshole, and you're cheating, everybody expects you to... Nobody... Nobody's surprised when the asshole cheats. Nobody's surprised. That doesn't betray anybody's trust, you know? It's no big deal. But... But when the good guys cheat, that stings. That hurts. You can't be the good guys and cheat. If you ever do that, then you've you've betrayed the trust. You've betrayed everybody's trust. I don't think you could have killed the Freeport any other way. I don't think there was any other way to kill the Freeport. There were too many good people. It was too much fun. The war was too much fun. Honestly, probably the Libertalia War was one of the best things to happen at the Freeport, <laughs> if we're being really honest. The Freeport didn't die because of the fighting. It died because people who should, who were trusted in the Freeport violated the principles of the Freeport. And that killed it. You can't do that. You can't do that. The good guys can't survive that. So anyway. So anyway. That uh, Freeport Osiris was a bitter pill to swallow. It was a really, really bitter pill. I lost friends over that. I don't talk to gasoline or clay anymore or any of the other hangers on. None of the people who were involved in that. They all, I, I purged them all out of the harbor men and then I just sort of retreated and, uh, I, I went and played other games. I didn't play world of drift anymore after that. I, a little bit, I still miss the game. I, I, I played it a little bit after that. I think I racked up a total of about 500 hours in total on World's Drift. And as a World's Drift leader, that's not a lot of hours. I didn't I didn't really play it enough. Between the alpha and the uh and early access, I think I think four or five hundred hours was all I put in. Because of the Freeport. 
because the Freeport failed so spectacularly. So lessons that I learned from those times are why, are why I'm using my YouTube channel as a platform now to tell these other groups um, that what they're getting into is, uh, is, is liable to fail. You know, I've tried making game governments. I've tried declaring peace in a space and trying to enforce laws and things like that. I've tried these things that these people are talking about doing. And I can tell you that there are good, solid reasons. Reasons that are inherent to the nature of gaming itself. Why these things would not work. I had to learn hard lessons to really understand. And that's why I uh, that's why I talk about this now. So, if you're going to do a free Port Osiris, expect that a Libertalia is going to come and try to kill you. And embrace it. Because that can be some really fun gameplay, actually. <laughs> There we go. All right, and as a final, just sort of a funny note, um, there are a couple of people who have stolen my username on uh, the Starbase forums. There is a Meister Space Keen, and there's a Meister Keen. Neither of these guys are me on the forum, but this guy, uh, this is my this is my avatar signature that I usually use. And this guy, I don't know where he found this picture. This is glorious. I have stolen this. This is now my Discord avatar. At least until I change it back. <laughs> but anyway, keep in mind I've got a couple of imposters on the Starbase forum. And uh, you might see uh, imposters here and there elsewhere. I don't know. Apparently I'm popular now. So if I say something that's really weird and out of character, it might not be me. <laughs> keep that in mind. Oh, and uh, as a final sort of a note on this story, I did amend the Code of the Harbormen. Though I oppose cheaters and seek to defeat them, I shall not use their methods. Cheating is harmful to the game itself and cannot be justified. If you're a gamer and you cheat, you are dishonoring yourself, you are dishonoring the game. You're not a gamer. If you're a dev, a game dev, and you are allowing gamers to cheat on your game, you are dishonoring your game. And you are dishonoring yourself. Cheaters gonna cheat. Get them out of your community. They aren't gamers. They're not welcome here. End of video.